Union, the organization which organizes CPAC, and he is the one who conducted that interview with Steve Bannon, as well as Chief of Staff Ryan Priebus. And Kurt Bardella was a media consultant for Breitbart News while Steve Bannon was running. Good evening, gentlemen. Matt, first to you. You know, always from the outside, it looks very different from what might be happening inside. Do you know anything about what's going inside that White House? Well, I guess all you have to do is read a bunch of articles to know what's going on inside this White House, because there is leaking like I've really never seen before. Some of these stories have 18 and 20 uh, you know, sources for the story. So look, but I it could be 18 or 20 anonymous sources. So I'm always a little bit suspicious. Do you mean like, do you have any information? I will tell you this, that I, I worked in a White House for a full term and the, there is always infighting. Everyone's always trying to get the favor of the president. The only difference with this White House is we seem to read about it a lot. And let's face it, Donald Trump wasn't a politician. He didn't have an established ideology and he hired a bunch of people who uh, are Democrats. And so it's an interesting world in there. Kurt, you know, um, uh, uh, Steve Bannon, because you worked over at Breitbart, and I mean, I know you had a little falling out with Breitbart, and um, put that on the table. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it's kind of what happens when you give a bully a title at the White House and a very senior title. And the style that Steve ran Breitbart, very much kind of dictatorial, it doesn't work when you apply it to adults. It's one thing when you have a bunch of 20-something kids running around, you know, an online news site that you can kind of bark orders at them and demean them and, 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 and yell at them at all hours of the night. It's another thing when you try to do it with members of Congress, with senior policy advisors, with other senior White House staff to try to move an agenda forward, what you're seeing is the follow to that. That style doesn't work. What to do? Defend uh, Ben, and he came into the White House right. uh, with a very strong passion and ideology about ma basically making America great again, which is what the president ran on. Um, you know, so that was that was sort of what the president was even elected on. And he seems to be digging his heels in, at least it seems from the outside. And it's the other people who come in who, who may disagree with him. That's right. Look, I, I've never worked at Breitbart, but I know Steve very well and I've worked closely with him. I haven't seen this side of him uh, as I know he's a passionate person. And I do think he views himself inside the White House as someone who's kind of the keeper of the spirit of the campaign. And I think the vice president views himself that uh, as that role as well. And for a lot of us who supported Donald Trump, we're glad there are people doing that inside. But what happens when what happens when President Trump sort of backs off a little bit on his commitments on, on NAFTA or he backs off on some of his commitments, even like about China, because he's meeting with the president? of China. I mean, what happens then? I think you're already kind of seeing the groundwork. And, and when you look at what Breitbart's been reporting the last day or two, they've done some four or five stories attacking Jared Kushner. And there are, Steve is already setting up where the is blame is going to fall. Are, no. are, you, are you suggesting that those, those are coming from Steve Bannon? Absolutely. There is no, no line of no separation. He says no. There is no, no line way. of separation between Breitbart and the, and the, and the Steve Bannon White House. But when you look at Julia Hahn, who worked at Breitbart, now they're at, at the White House. Sebastian Gorka was at Breitbart, now at the White House. Steve but, but Bannon. We have, but we have, we, this, is, this is sort of the nature of D.C. with we got this revolving door. I've worked at three networks now. Some can say, some say I can't hold a job. The difference is a lot of people. But I mean, people are coming and going in no, all these. Is a lot of the people. This is at, a no, 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 conspiracy no. theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. No. Uh, the thing is, a lot of people at Breitbart assume that when Steve leaves the White House at some point, he's going to go right back there and they'll be working for him. All right, I'll let you respond to that. Because nothing I don't know. I don't have a dog. By the way, fight. nothing wrong with that. Actually, one of the things about Steve that I hear complaints, including from Breitbart people, is that they can't get him on the phone because at this White House, it seems like all the action and energy is around the president. And they're all Always around the president. I think the president likes having them around. That's another aspect of this White House. But no, I think that you think you think he's running Breitbart, Bannon? Absolutely not. I no, know it's not true. That he called Matt Boyle about a story Boyle published. Well but they call, they call, we get yelled at all the time. Like, I've called you before. You, you can't say that there's no communication when there is. No, there's communication, but he's not running the organization. That's a stretch. All right. Anyway, um, I'm sure we have a lot of time to talk. We have another three years minus 98 days or so. Anyway. <laughs>